I've never owned or shot with the Sigma lens. Usually I'll just take the kit lenses that come with my cameras and that's good enough for me, with the exception of a couple full frame Tamron lenses. But being that the ZV-E10 is my first APS-C camera, I figured I should go out and probably invest in some lenses. But before I went out and just bought some nice prime lenses, I thought it would be a good idea to test them out first. And why not share my experience with you? Hurry up and get your seat before the bell rings. If you're interested in joining this film school, according to YouTube analytics, it's an all boys school, but that doesn't really make sense because we know that Jenny, Giselle, and Diane all attend class frequently. So hurry up and hit that like button if you don't want to receive a tardy. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the three Sigma lenses that are also known as the Sigma Trio. And we're going to shoot those on the ZV-E10 and compare them to the kit lens that comes with the ZV-E10 so that you can see what you are or what you're not missing out on. You'll get extra credit today if you take notes and leave it in the comment section as this video progresses. In this course, we're gonna talk about the video and photography capabilities, what the blurry background looks like on each of them, the image quality, their portrait ability, what the handheld footage looks like, the sharpness compared to the kit lens, product photography in a controlled lighting environment, minimum focus distance on each lens. We'll do an autofocus test. We wanna see what that sun flare looks like. We'll do some landscape shots. And we'll talk about each lens and when I would use them and what would motivate me to use each lens. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of if you want to give these guys a home in your camera bag. And if at the end of this class, you still don't know much about these lenses, then I have failed you and I will just sign off and go quietly into the night. After doing some research, I found this trio of lenses. It's a 16, 30, and 56 millimeter prime lens with an aperture of f1.4. At the time of creating this video, they run for about 1100 bucks on Amazon, and I did not want to purchase $1,100 worth of lenses. I figured I would just try them out first. So I contacted Lens Rentals, and they offered me a credit if I mentioned them in this video. And they also gave a link to me that I can give to you guys where I will earn a small commission if you want to try them out. And they also gave me a link to give to you guys that will give you 15% off so make sure to take advantage of that. Their service is the best and largest online rental house in the country. So before you go out and you just purchase your next big ticket item, whether that's a camera or a lens, try lens rentals out so you can save yourself a ton of money. First, let's talk about prime lenses. And while we're talking about prime lenses, I'm gonna be interchanging each one of these lenses onto the ZV-E10 so that you guys can have a good idea of what the blurry background looks like, what the image quality looks like, and also their framing. Now we have the Sigma 16 millimeter lens on the ZV-E10, and I have the aperture all the way open to f1.4 so that you guys can really take a good look at the background to see how blurry it is, and also, the image quality. Now speaking about prime lenses, prime lenses don't zoom. So the focal length that you have on the lens is all you get. And here's the kit lens on the ZV-E10 pulled all the way back to 16 millimeters to give us a good idea of what it looks like compared to the Sigma 16. Now you're seeing the 30 millimeter lens shot on the ZV-E10 and prime lenses are usually a lot sharper than zoom lenses, mainly because they have less glass in them. One downside to prime lenses, if you're shooting something that's moving is you constantly have to move the camera around. You can't just zoom in like you can with the kit lens. Here's the kit lens on the ZV-E10 set to 30 millimeters so that you can have a good apples to apples comparison of the Sigma 30 millimeter lens. Here we are with the Sigma 56 millimeter lens on the ZV-E10. I would use this lens for any type of headshots or interviews or YouTube videos. But one thing to remember is you have to have a pretty big space to use this lens because right now my camera is about 10 feet away from me. And if I was in a small space, there's no way I could pull off the shot. But the reason I like this lens so much is because it really blurs out my background. Here's the kit lens at 50 millimeters. And even though it doesn't go all the way to 56 millimeters like the Sigma 56, it still gives you a good idea of image quality, background blurriness, and overall look. Now let's go test these lenses out on actual people to see how the portraits come out. When we're taking portraits of people, my go-to lens would either be the 30 millimeter or the 56 millimeter. We wouldn't really wanna use the 16 millimeter or the wide angle lens because it distorts the outsides of the image. Shoot, I forgot to turn the hair light on. Now what was I saying? Oh yes, normally I would not use a wide angle lens to shoot a portrait, but I was pretty surprised on how good the little 16 millimeter performs when taking portraits.
These lenses don't have in-camera stabilization, so if you're gonna use these lenses, with your APS-C camera, whether that's the ZV-E10 or another camera, I would definitely throw them up on a gimbal. I wouldn't try to walk with them. And if you don't have a gimbal and you only can walk with them, then I would say use the widest angle lens you have because that's a lot more forgiving when it comes to image stabilization. But with that being said, I still went out and tested each one of these lenses out handheld so that you guys can see what it looks like. Now the ZV-E10 does have internal stabilization set to active, so it will punch in a little bit further it still isn't the best stabilization in the world. A lot of it's just unusable. Now I wanna test the sharpness out of these lenses compared to the kit lens while also doing product photography in a controlled lighting environment. Now take note, when I zoom in with the kit lens all the way to 50 millimeters on the ZV-E10, the aperture raises up to f5.6 and that's as low as I can go. So my background is not gonna be as blurry when I'm zoomed all the way in. Now when I zoom out a little bit with the kit lens to 30 millimeters so I can compare it to the 30 millimeter Sigma lens, the lowest aperture I can get on the ZV-E10 is f5. It's only when I take it all the way down to 16 millimeters do I get the f3.5 that they advertise for this kit lens. All three of these Sigma lenses have f1.4. So you're gonna get a lot more light into the lens, which means you're gonna have a much more blurry background. I wanted to test out the minimum focus distance on all of these lenses because that's pretty important to me if I'm trying to do some macro photography or just punch in and get some close shots. I've had lenses in the past where you have to stay really far away and because you have that so much distance in between, you can't really get in and do a close-up shot. So I thought that was pretty important. So I tested out every single one of these lenses and I compared it to the kit lens and I pulled out my measuring tape so that we could get a real idea of how far you need to be away from the lens and still have it in focus. The Sigma 16 millimeter took me just under three inches from what I was shooting, where when I was using the kit lens at 16 millimeters, I was just under five inches. So that's a pretty big difference, especially when you wanna get a super close up. When I put the 30 millimeter Sigma lens onto the ZV-E10, I got about eight inches away from my product. And when I turned the kit lens to 30 millimeters, I was at about eight inches. When I put the Sigma 56 millimeter lens on the ZV-E10, I was at a whopping 13 inches away from the product. And with the kit lens, I was just over eight inches. So it was kind of like the more I zoomed in with the kit lens, the closer I could bring my product compared to the prime lenses. The higher in millimeter I got with the prime lenses, the further away the product got. Now I know a lot of people are interested in the autofocus when it comes to these Sigma lenses. So I did an autofocus test in a controlled lighting environment where I made sure that I had a lot of contrast in my hand when I was putting it in front of the lens. And I also turned my focus to center focus so that whatever was in the center of the lens came into focus so that we could test it out to see how fast the Sigma lenses were able to autofocus on our timer. Getting landscape shots is important to any photographer when it comes to how wide they actually are, what they look like, and how sharp they are. My go-to lens when it comes to landscapes would be the 16 millimeter or just to take your kit lens as wide as it will go so that you can see everything that's in the frame so that you can really help tell your story. So in my opinion, hands down, these lenses outperformed the kit lens by leaps and bounds. They have a faster aperture, which means more blurry of a background. They're sharper, they look cooler, but they definitely have some negatives like no image stabilization and they don't have a zoom function. So instead of zooming in like you can with the ZV-E10, you actually have to manually move the camera. So that's a little bit of a problem. But if you're going for some really nice sharp lenses, I would definitely highly recommend purchasing these Sigma lenses or at least renting them. The 16 millimeter lens is perfect for tight spaces or landscape shots or even real estate. It has the minimum focus distance, which makes it great for like product shots. If you're a vlogger, this would be a great lens to pick up. If I had a choice between these three lenses, I wouldn't use this one for portraits, but I would use it if I was in a pinch. If you find yourself shooting a lot of real estate, landscape, or you're in tight spaces, then that's where I would highly recommend this 16 millimeter lens. The 30 millimeter lens is the best all around lens. You could use it for portraits, landscape photography. You could do it in tight spaces, but you're not gonna get as wide of an angle as you would with the 16. I wouldn't use this lens for vlogging. I wouldn't use this lens if you were going handheld because the footage is just too shaky unless you're just standing still or you have some type of body mount. But out of these three lenses, if I was to buy any one of them, it would be the 30 millimeter just because it can do so much. The 30 millimeter is also nice because it's the equivalent of your nifty 50 and it just takes beautiful portraits. 
The 56 millimeter lens is made for portraits. If you are a big time portrait shooter, then I would highly recommend you pick this lens up because it's so sharp. It gives you such a blurry background to the point where you can't even tell where you are. In fact, if you're a criminal and you don't want the police to figure out where you took a photo, this would be the lens to use because the background is just so blurry. Now you do have to stand back pretty far in order for this lens to work, so it's definitely not one that you should use in tight spaces or even as a vlog camera, but it's great for product photography and also taking those nice crisp and clean portraits. If you're a photographer and all you do is shoot photography, then I would highly recommend you pick up all three of these lenses because of the sharpness that they produce. If you're a video shooter and a lot of your shots are headshots or interviews, then I would also highly recommend you pick up these three lenses. If you're a running gun shooter, then I would hold off and just pick up the 18 to 50 f 2.8 Sigma lens that just came out because that way you don't have to be stuck on whatever millimeter lens that you have on the camera. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Your homework is to comment on which one of these lenses is your favorite. If you have any teacher recommendations on what else you would like to cover in the next class, then let me know in the comment section. Until the next video, I'm Joe with Film Alliance School. Peace.